If you're ready to give people a newer, fresher way to interact with your Airtable data, look no further than this video. I'm going to be going into detail about how I just built a softer web app that uses my Airtable data to power it, and I did this in under 30 minutes. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, do check out our website. I will include links below. And don't miss our free Airtable crash course. It will get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. But without further ado, let's jump into the heart of this video. We are talking about softer. I mentioned it last week in our video where we did an intro to the software, but Basically, in a nutshell, Softer allows you to build a really customizable interface for your Airtable data. Right now, it is read-only, meaning that people can't actually write new data to your Airtable database or update existing stuff. They can use forms to submit data, but they can't actually edit it. But that's in the works. So if you're watching this in the future, there's a good chance that you can already do that in Softer. But what I've built here today for us is a members site I am making people log in before they get access to any of the templates that we've produced that they want to download. So the idea here is you have to put your name and email address in, in order to get our templates. Once you're signed in, you know, membership is free. Once you're signed in, you can go in, get any of the templates you want and, uh, and be out of there. So let's jump into how I built this in software. As I said, in under 30 minutes. All right. So first things first. Inside of Softer, on the right, on the left-hand side, I want you to draw your attention to these four pieces. These are the building blocks of what you're building. So, I started this from scratch, mapped it to my Airtable database, all point and click. All I had to do was give it the Airtable API key. First and foremost, we've got our pages here. Pages are going to be the different web pages inside of your web app. So for me, I've got this home page where most of everything happens, but we also have a login and a sign up page. Then we have our blocks and the blocks are what we use inside of the pages. So if you think of the web app as being top level and inside the web app, we have different pages and each page is going to be comprised of one or more blocks. Those blocks have a lot of different options on them. We can bring in, you know, hero calls to actions, uh, bring in partner things, pricing team testimonials, FAQs, all the different pieces that you might need to build a website or a web app. Footer, navigator, you name it. User accounts is where you're going to get all those sign up forms, you know, user profiles, sign in forms, all of these pieces. So that's what I'm working with here in mine largely. You've also got your data. Data is where we're going to store any information about people who are signing in. And so this is where accounts get created. So as people create accounts, that, that information is going to be added here. Now I did talk to software about this and they say that a big feature request from, the, from their users is to bring this into a sync with Airtable. So pretty soon, maybe when you're watching this, you're going to be able to actually visualize your users in your Airtable database. But for now it's currently living inside of software. And then lastly, you've got your settings and this is kind of like a meta settings for your overall app. You can change your default colors, update your custom domain, you know, SEO settings, build your integrations, you name it. So let's look at our pages and talk about how we limit who can see what, because that's really at the core of what is so powerful about this. So I go in here on my page, you'll see that I've got the same little hero blurb here twice, and it's a little different each time. First time I'm looking at members only. So this is something that we're saying, hey, you're not signed in yet. So we're saying, hey, you, you need to be a member to access this. You can either sign up or log in. But if you're already logged in, if you're already a member, then we're going to say, grab immediate access to our templates, go to the templates, right? So your, your interaction with this web page is going to be totally different based on whether you're logged in or not. So that is controlled by going into each of these little blurbs and checking out your visibility in the upper right corner. So this particular one, this particular blurb is only visible to people who are not logged in. And you can see that we denoted that here. Now this second one, if I click on this one and I again go to the visibility section, this is only visible to people who are logged in. 
And I want to point out that there's some really advanced stuff right around the corner because not only can we say, hey, you've got to be logged in to see this, but we can also say, and your email address has to meet certain conditions or we can set up payment conditions through Stripe. You have to have paid for a certain program in order to get access to this particular part of the page. So there's a lot of customization here and you can really go to the next level in terms of putting together courses or whatever you could imagine really behind a paywall in Softer. Now lastly, I've got the templates themselves. And of course, these are only going to be visible. Again, go to that upper right corner and check that visibility. This is only visible to logged in users. Now in terms of what they're seeing, well, that all comes down to how we mapped out this little list. So this particular block that I'm sharing all my templates in actually comes in the form of a list block. So let's go ahead and find that here. And you can see that you have a lot of different options from list and also list details. So you can really drill into how you want to allow people to interact with your data. Now for me, I went really high level for this example. So it's just the list block. I believe I picked this one, the list with vertical cards, but experiment with different ones and see what you like. Now inside of that block, after we back out of the visibility, of course, we're mapping it to an Airtable base. So this is where it's saying, hey, I'm, this is where I'm getting the data from. But then we also need to, you know, pick where we want the categories to show up. Like if we want to put them on the left, you know, people can filter on the left. I kind of like them on the top. Then we have to map all these different pieces to the list, right? So the list has an image or a video. It, the list has a title. The list has a subtitle. And so all of this data, image, title, description, these are fields in my Airtable database. So let me pop into Airtable and show you. I've got my database here with my title, my description, and my images. And that is the data that's just showing up there right on queue. So we can map all of that. And then I want to say, hey, when somebody clicks this, I want an action to occur. In this case, I want the, it to open to an external URL and take you to the template link. And the template link is something that I'm storing inside of Airtable where people can log in and get access to these templates. So let's take this out for a spin. Once we've got this all published, we go ahead and uh, publish it here, pop it open, and this is what it looks like. I can sign in or sign up or log in. I'll go ahead and sign in here. I've already created an account for myself. Once I've logged in, you see that I get access to what I would expect to see, namely the templates. So I can uh, go ahead and click on any of these to see where it's going to take me. And let's see if it pops open correctly. The Airtable template. This is the task template. So that's great. So it opens up perfectly based on what I would expect. So we see that everything is working. Now, the other part that you've got to map out here at a minimum, you have to have a login page and a sign up page. Of course, you can get as fancy as you want in yours, uh, but everything is really point and click. Create that login page, add a block. In this case, I used the user accounts block and I brought in the sign in block. As you can see right here, I just made some slight customizations to it. And then you need to start mapping things around. So you have to say, well, if they click on forgot password, obviously I didn't build a forgot password page, but I probably should get to that. If they sign up, uh, if, if they want to click on sign up instead of sign in, then we need to take them to the sign up page. And so you can really just go in and say what happens when somebody clicks this button, perform that action step. It's really point and click. Now the last page here is our sign up page. And of course it's going to be really simple or really similar to our sign in page. Somebody signs up, they provide their name, email address, etc. And over here you see that it's all mapped up as well. So same idea, and we just need to make sure that all our pages are clicking back and forth between each other correctly to make sure that people can navigate the site. You can take this out for a spin in preview mode when you're testing it out, and then once you're ready to go, just hit publish, and your app will be live. So I, I'm really, really excited about all the potential that this unlocks for us, the way that we can now allow people to get limited access to our Airtable data just continues to improve. And I'm really, really excited that software came out with such a great and flexible tool that really allows you to customize the web app to look and feel how you want it to. 
Let me know in the comments below how you plan on using this amazing tool. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly. And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you.